This is Peanut. Peanut's a baby bird. Can you tell what kind? Well, let's see if we can figure it out as we go along with our video. All birds have feathers. However, not all birds have feathers when they are born. When we describe baby birds, there are two terms, altricial and precocial. Precocial are birds like our ducks and our geese. They're born with a full body of soft, fluffy feathers, and they're ready to get up and run around and start looking for food and start swimming very, very soon after they are born. Their altricial cousins are things like our songbirds, something like, say, a baby robin. And these guys are born naked with their eyes closed, and they are really, really dependent on their moms. They cannot regulate their own body temperature. That means that they would get very, very cold if their mom wasn't there to keep them warm and snuggly. Bird nests come in all different shapes and sizes. The one you most commonly think of is probably what's called a cup nest. And this is the one that looks almost like your cereal bowl, made usually out of sticks, and grasses, sometimes different kinds of mosses, and these ones sit there and they literally cup the eggs. The most simple kind of nest is called a scrape nest, where literally the mom just takes her foot and kind of makes a scrape in the ground to make just kind of a little impression in the ground that the eggs can lay in. And then we can have other birds who are really dedicated to their nest. The bald eagle, for example, will keep the same nest for years, even decades. Some have been known to keep the same nest for 30 years. They build onto it, and by the time it's done, it can be up to 2,000 pounds or more. Sometimes they even cause the tree to collapse under the weight of these amazing nests that they keep using. And speaking of our altricial birds, we usually break down babyhood into three phases. First comes the hatchling, and these guys are the most naked and often have closed eyes. Then we have our nestlings, who have the little fluffy feathers that'll start to keep them warm, but won't really get them anywhere. And lastly, our fledglings. They grow their feathers out into little pin feathers, which then open up into actual flight feathers. This is when they start to look a lot more like mom and dad. Did you find a hatchling or a nestling on the ground? Well, this actually happens fairly commonly. Sometimes the nest has fallen apart in a storm. Sometimes the baby has accidentally fallen out or been pushed out by one of its siblings. In this case, if you can reach the nest, put the baby back in. Don't worry, it's okay if you touch it. Mom won't reject it. In fact, in most cases, our songbirds have a really poor sense of smell. That means they won't even be able to tell by smelling their baby that you have touched. Is the nest unreachable? Well, you can still put your baby bird back in the tree just lower down to the part that you can reach. What you can do is make an artificial nest, say out of a small plastic container with a few holes drilled in the bottom so that if it rains, the water can drain out. You can put some sticks or grass as a liner for your container, but don't use any kind of fabric that has strings because you don't want it to wrap around baby's toes. Is the baby bird that you found a fledgling? Well, this is also very common. As a baby bird is learning to fly, very often they end up on the ground. They're stretching their wings, they're practicing, and they're really just not quite there yet. How do you know if a baby bird really does need help? This is a question that we get a lot at our local wildlife center. In some cases, it's fairly obvious. If the baby bird has an injury, if you see some blood, or if it's been caught by a cat or a dog, then it definitely should be seen by a wildlife rehabilitator. In some cases, you might find a baby duckling or goose 
that has been left by the side of the road as the parents were crossing and the cars came along too quickly. And in other cases, you might not know if the baby bird needs help. In that case, we recommend you contact your local wildlife hospital or rehabilitator and they'll be able to help you figure out whether this baby bird needs some help. Baby or young birds often have different colored feathers than their parents. In the case of the bald eagle, they actually don't get their white feathers on the top of their head for about four to five years. Birds have different shaped beaks depending on what kind of diet they eat. So a seed eating bird has a much different beak than say a fishing bird. Looking at the shape of the beak can often help us tell what kind of baby bird we have. So let's look back at Peanut. When Peanut was born, he was naked. That means he is an altricial bird. Then, if we look at the size of Peanut compared to my hand, he's a rather large bird, much larger than our little robin friend that we looked at earlier. Then, lastly, if we look at his beak shape, this can offer us a pretty good idea as to what he is. Peanut's parents are Homer and Rexa, two of our rescue pigeons. So in this case, we knew what kind of bird Peanut was to start off with. But when working as a wildlife rehabilitator, often we have to try to figure out what kind of bird that we have so that we know how to care for it properly. If you would like to see more videos of Peanut in the future, please subscribe to our channel as we will post more as our little friend here grows up.